Fairgrounds, amidst the swirling hypnotic appeal of lights, rides, candy floss sugar highs and sticky waltz of vomit, we come to test ourselves and find our limits. There are certain situations which are so intense that people caught in them achieve perfect synchronicity with each other. Horror films and fairground rides are just two examples. Oh, I look at you two standing there. Can I borrow you for a minute? Come stand up on these stairs. I can put you there. And you there. What's your name? Lewis. Lewis, I'm Darren and... Beverly. Beverly, very pleased to meet you. Are you two going out together? Yeah. Perfect. How long have you been going out for? Two years. Two years. Now, you must probably find during that time that there are moments when you both know what the other person's about to say. Or that you find yourself almost sort of so in tune with someone that you... Yeah? Do you both come out with the same thing? Some people put that down to a psychic connection. I don't. It's about understanding people. And when you've been going out with someone for a while, you know, relationships are all about... Um, knowing how to make other people react in situations. Well, that's what this is about. I want to try something with you. I'm going to give you each a pad. You take that for me. And I'm going to give you a pen. All right, one for you, and one for you, Beverly. Now I'm going to put you on opposite cards of the water, and I'm going to spin you around, and I'm going to tell you at a specific moment to start drawing. And when you do, you're both going to draw a picture. Don't decide now what you're going to draw, all right? Don't decide that until your pen touches the page, okay? I just want to try this. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, come on. You come around here for me. Go right, put you here. In you go, sir. I'm going to get in the booth. Can you both hear me? Lewis, Beverly, you ready? Both of you clear your minds. Do not start drawing yet. I'll tell you when I want you to start. Imagine in front of you a screen. A blank screen. Gonna get a little faster. See that blank screen? Imagine a picture starting to appear on that screen. Get ready to draw. Change your mind a few times about what you're gonna draw. Do not draw until I tell you to. Get a little faster. See the screen in your mind. Keep it blank. We're gonna get a little faster and faster. Spinning round and around. Now, draw! Draw what you see in your mind. I just had the pens back. All right. Are either of you religious? No. No? The only reason why I ask is that the lights and the rhythmic sounds and, and the music of uh, fairground rides is known to activate the frontal lobe of the brain. The frontal lobe of the brain, when that happens, is often attached to, to religious hallucinations and things that people have. This is just something that happens. Did either of you draw anything remotely religious? Yeah. <laughs> yeah? Okay, turn the pictures around, show me what you drew. What is this? <laughs> it's supposed to be an angel. An angel? And what's this? An angel. It well, it's like supposed a, to be. <laughs> an angel. This is the halo, yeah? Yeah. What's this here? That was the skirt, and that was the wand. <laughs> And that's the halo, because angels have one, so they, that's, um, is that the halo, <laughs> is that the halo there? It's quite hard to draw in waltzers. I was just in the waltzer car and he's saying, let your mind go blank. And then an angel popped into my head, so I just drew it. And he drew the same, it's just weird. It didn't look much like an angel, but it was. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know, it's just a bit freaky, though. Oh, I don't understand how he does that. Mm. <laughs> Maybe we're just a perfect match, though. <laughs> Some athletes use the mind to try and improve stamina and strength. Can I use my mind to take it away? Let's um, use this guy here. Yes, Williams, come forward. Come here. Williams, yeah? No, I want to take you up here into the ring, all right? We're going to go try something up here. Come with me. OK. Come stand in the middle for me, Williams. About there, face me. And tell me, we haven't met before, I haven't hypnotised you, we haven't done this stuff like that. No. Okay, all right. Now you're a fit guy, you're obviously a strong guy, let me try this with you. Um, Jasmine, can I use you? Can you come up here, please? Come stand opposite Williams, face him. What I need you to do is to lift Jasmine, all right? Just lift her straight up, if you can do that. 
Again? Perfect. That's great. Now look at me. Look at me. When I say the word now, you try and lift her. Wait. Get ready. Okay, now. Again. <laughs> I tried to lift her up and first time it worked, but the second time it's like he had this doing this thing behind me, man. Couldn't lift her up. Yeah. When I say the word now, you will not be able to lift her. Excellent. Get ready. That's it. Now. Can I say you weekly? Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Next time. Big fella. Fantastic. What's your name? Paul. Paul. Stand there. Hands on knees, lift us straight up. Straight up, straight. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Now look at me. Shh. When I say now, you will not be able to lift her. Wait. Go. Wait. Okay. Now. <laughs> Again. Wait. Again. <laughs> Look at me. Okay, look at me. <laughs> You're a big <laughs> fucker, I'm gonna come back to you later. <laughs> Again, all right? I haven't hypnotized you, haven't done this stuff like that. We haven't set anything up. Look at me. When I say now, you will not be able to lift her. Look at me. Yeah, excellent, get ready. Wait, wait. Okay, now. Now. <laughs> I don't know, I just tried to lift that trap, put all my strength into it and she wasn't moving. I was extremely surprised. If you missed the beginning of this show, if you missed the film at the very start, just let me explain briefly again that the name Svengali goes back beyond the novel Trilby that made it famous to being the name of an automaton. And an automaton is an early robot. And this one was built in 1760 by a Hungarian called Hugo von Levasht. And these automata were entertainments, they played instruments and so on. But Svengali did something that terrified people in its day. And it looked like a little boy, specifically the dead son of its inventor. He'd modeled the likeness on a death mask of his own son that he made when his son died and then became so obsessed with perfecting that likeness that he drove himself mad, lost everything he had. And after he died, the doll passed through the hands of various collectors, people in inner magic circles, occultists, all of whom were obsessed with discovering Svengali's secrets. 50 years ago, it disappeared completely. No one knew where it was. Five years ago, it turned up at an auction in Philadelphia where it was bought by an anonymous bidder. That anonymous bidder was me and I have Svengali here tonight to perform for you. So he's what's known as a true automaton. A true automaton means he's completely self-contained. There is no one inside or outside operating him. He contains over 150 yards of brass tubing, over 3,000 cogs that make him work, and he wouldn't normally perform for an audience this size. It would be 30 or 40 view at the most. So we have a camera set up so that you can get a better view of him. So I spent the last four years restoring him. He needed a lot of work and a lot of love. The winding happens before the show, it takes about six minutes. This is just the final tightening that does need to be done now. But following his restoration, he is now back in his original performing state. This I find extraordinary. I ring a bell and a piece of clockwork responds to the sound of the bell. It knows that the bell has been rung. 
Now, we've had his own sounds amplified. There's a microphone in there just so that you can hear him. But he responds to the sound of the bell. Watch. So people began to believe that this doll had some kind of supernatural ability. And there were stories of people at the back of the demonstration saying the doll had possessed them, had taken them over, and they'd become cataleptic, unable to move. And von Lavash encouraged this belief that the doll could possess people. He became something of a charlatan in his later years. And the act would include a demonstration of a member of the audience possessed by the doll. That's what we're going to do now. Do not take part in this if you have any trouble standing, if you're not completely steady on your feet, if you have any respiratory problems, if you have any condition that might affect your hands or arms, and if you have a severe phobia of needles or injections, do not take part. Otherwise... <clears throat> otherwise, take a look at his right hand. Now, the hand there you see with the maker's mark stamped onto the palm, it's carved from one piece of solid wood. So those fingers are locked together. They do not come apart. All of you, please, if you're taking part, bring up your own right hand, bring it up in front of you, and take a look at the same symbol that's been stamped onto your palm, and then close your eyes. Squeeze that hand together. Keep your fingers extended. Do not clench your fist. Lock the hand tighter and tighter into place. Good. So tight now. So tight that on the count of three, one, two, three, but the more you try now to unlock that hand now, harder and harder, the more it locks doesn't it? The hand just keeps on locking tighter and harder. Now, there will be some people whose fingers will have come apart. They can drop their hands down. But the rest of you, the more you try to unlock that hand in front of you now, the more it keeps on locking and sticking tighter and tighter. In a moment, I'll tell you to open your eyes. When you do open your eyes in a moment, the moment you see it, it will stick twice as much because your conscious mind becomes aware of it too. It just sticks twice as much. Are you ready? Do it now. Open your eyes. Take a look at it. You'll see what I mean. I want you to show everybody else how good you are at this and stand up. <clears throat> You must stand if your hand is locked. Keep it at eye level, locked out there in front of you. Stand up. All of you, please, if your hands are stuck. Good, up you get. Good. You must stand. Look at the doll. Watch what happens when I ring the bell. When I ring the bell, the doll's arm is going to come up through the air. Your own arm will rise in sympathy with the doll's. And it can come right up above your head. Are you ready? Now, there it goes. Just let it happen. Just let it happen. Up. And up. Just that. Good. There it goes. Lovely. Just let it happen. Take its own time. Might take a moment. Then just up it goes. That's good. And it can stick right up there. As it goes right up there, it'll just stick right up there. And as you do this, as you do this, take a look at the doll. In here, this little pouch is a 200-year-old lady's handkerchief. They used to use this in the act. And embroidered on one corner are two initials. The doll is about to put into your head the correct initials that are embroidered on this handkerchief. Are you ready? The way he'll do it is by putting into your mind, when I ring the bell again, the image of someone that you know who has the correct initials. Are you ready? It happens now. In your mind now, the image of someone you know. In your mind now, remember their initials. That person that came into your mind, remember their initials? Remember their initials. The arm locked into place now. If you try and unlock it, it just keeps unlocking and sticking tighter and tighter into place. What's this like? What does this feel like? Weird. It is weird, isn't it? And you can really try, but the more you try to bring it down, the more it just keeps unlocking. What's this like? Tell me. Terrifying. <laughs> yeah. And what, if you try and force it down, what happens? It hurts. You know, what's your name? Matt. Just come around here for me. Look at me, look at me. Do not look at the doll. Good. You're going to keep looking this way. Your arm's going to stay stuck where it is. The rest of you, though, when I ring the bell, he lets go. Your arm comes down, your fingers come apart, and that happens now. There it goes. There it goes. Arm comes down, fingers come apart. You can sit yourselves down. Now you've got two hands. Give Matt a hand as you bring him up on stage. Up you come, Matt. Up you come. Okay, Matt, you're going to come and stand over here for me. Come and stand on this cross just there and turn and face me. Turn and face me, Matt. All right. Now, listen, a couple of things are going to happen very quickly here. Just look up into the palm of your hand. Just start to feel your eyes getting a little heavy around now. That's good. And as I touch you on the hand, your eyes just close. And then as the hand comes down, you can just sink and tumble and fall right the way down, right the way deep, right the way sound asleep. I want the rest of you to take a look at his feet. You see, Svengali's feet don't move. These are locked into place. In the same way, Matt, you can think about your right foot now, and you can just let him, as you think about it, just take hold of that right foot. And as he does that, that right foot just locks into place. Your left foot, you can move. You can do what you like with your left foot. In fact, if you try and take a step forward, you find you don't get very far, because you can only move one foot. You can move the left foot, but the right one just locks. That's good. As soon as you try and move it, it just locks even tighter. That's very good. Now, let's bring this left foot back, and now he takes that foot as well, and now both feet stick. 
Both feet now stick into the floor. If you try and unlock either foot, they just keep on pressing. The more you try, the more they stick, the more they just root down into the stage. That's very good, Matt. And when I touch you on the head in a moment, you can open your eyes, because you're not hypnotized, so you can open your eyes and look at me. I'm gonna to touch you here on the throat in a second. When I do, your throat and vocal cords are going to stick. You'll find that you can't talk. If you look at the doll, he can't talk. You see, his mouth doesn't even move. That's why he needs the alphabet board to tap out his answers. His mouth doesn't even move. When I touch you here, your throat and vocal cords will stick. When you try and say a word, nothing comes out. And that happens, look at me, now. Now if you try and say something, anything you like, you see, the more you try. So you can hear, you can hear him breathe, he can make, but if he tries to say a word, nothing happens. <laughs> How does it feel? <laughs> and if you think about your right hand at the moment, Matt, that is locked into place, you see? Keep your eyes open, I want you to see what's going on here. If he tries to move that right arm, if he tried to bring it up like this, nothing happens. If he tries to move it of his own accord, nothing happens, it just locks there. Yet, when I ring the bell, the doll's right arm comes up. Watch what his right arm does. And it'll lock into place if he tries to force it down on his own. Nothing happens, it just locks tighter. That's good, you see, Matt? You can try, but it just locks. Yet, when I ring the bell again. That's very good, Matt. Excellent. And now I just want you to close your eyes and just relax and sink down into that sleep state. That's good. Nice and deeply. Very good. Now we're going to bring in a chair behind you. I'm going to pop you back in this chair. That means he's going to release the tension. So you can relax. So you can sit straight back down. There's a chair right behind you. That's very good. Excellent. Let's just wheel you around here. You're doing very good. Your eyes can remain closed and you can just sleep nice and deeply for me as I talk to the audience. So a lot of this was really interesting to me, but it could be explained. It could be explained through suggestion. Namely, that if the subject, like Matt here, can see the doll's arm coming up, for example, that he just, his unconscious mind knows to copy it. What was really interesting to me is where similar things would happen, but where the subject couldn't see the doll. So it couldn't be explained through suggestion. So at the moment his eyes are closed, I want you to sit up nice and straight for us. Matt, can't see anything that's important. His eyes are closed. All right, Matt, that'll seem like an odd question to you, I'm sure, but if you felt any poking or tapping, I need you to just raise one arm up in front of you. This is a clear signal. Good. Okay, that's going to be your signal from now on that you can feel this. But actually, just while you're doing that, just bring that arm up. Just show us exactly where you felt it. Let me just check this. Excellent. Very good indeed. Okay, so we'll do it again. Each time that we do this, I want you just to signal to the audience when you feel it. It'll be in a different place and a di different feeling uh, now when we do it. That doesn't matter. Just a nice, clear signal to the audience. Just raise one arm straight up, clearly in the air, out in front of you. The moment that you feel this, here. Very good, excellent. Raise your hand when you feel this, here. Very good. And it wasn't just a question of these simple demonstrations of a physical rapport that springs up between the doll and the subject. This got taken to a level that became too much for the Catholic Church. In 1873, they exorcised Svengali, which is extraordinary. It's the only time in the history of the Catholic Church that a doll has gone through the entire ritual of exorcism reserved for a human being. And it was for precisely the demonstration that I will show you now. Okay. That's very good, Matt. Let's just put you right there. And I'm going to give you a couple of things to hold on to. Thank you very much. Uh, now this is a blackboard, so if I rest that there, you can bring that arm up and just hold on to that there for me. That's very good. Excellent. That can stay just there for me. And in your other hand, a piece of chalk. Let me give you that. You can just grip hold of that. Lovely. Now you can leave your arm uh, just where it is, but just pay attention now to the feelings in your left arm and your left hand as the doll takes full control. You will start to feel little movements and tugs and twitches in the arm that don't come from you, but it can just remain where it is for the moment. The rest of you, included in the sale of the doll, were a couple of other items of significance. Uh, in particular, this handkerchief here. Now, I will show this to you. Please don't say anything out loud. Obviously, he can't see anything, but I don't want him hearing either. The initials on the corner of this handkerchief are... That. So, paying attention now to the feelings in that left arm and that left hand, 
Matt, as the doll starts to take control. That's good, the left arm always known as uh, the devil's arm, always used for any kind of possession writings, although he's probably right-handed, we use the left arm. The word sinister comes from the Latin for left-handed. It has a long history of association with the occult. When I ring the bell in a moment, Matt, the doll will bring your arm up and across to the board, and he will write through you just the first of those two initials, nice and clearly on the board. Svengali, would you please write for us, through Matt, the first of the two initials on the board, nice and clearly. Would you do that for us now? Very good. That's very good indeed. Let's do this again. Svengali, would you please write for us through Matt the second of the two initials. Do that for us now. Excellent. That's very good. And now the doll relinquishes all control. He lets go of you. Now you will feel a change happen. You'll feel a shift inside you. You'll feel a weight lifting from you. You'll feel your limbs relaxing. Your throat will open up. You'll feel that weight shifting from you. When you're quite ready to come back to us, you'll be able to open your eyes. Thank you, Matt. Let me just take this from you. So you wrote there, I think that's a D yeah. and an S. Now. Or at least your arm wrote that. What, is that. what did that feel like? Did it feel like you were moving your own arm? No, it felt really, really weird. Like, um, like I'd really lost weird. control of it. And I was, sort of, well, I was sort of trying to fight it, but it was just drawing my hand to the board. And it felt really shaky, like I couldn't write properly. Against your own will, yeah. you were trying to stop it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stand up for me. Let me show you what happened. So yes, you wrote a D and an S, right? Now, if you just, uh, just come and stand here for me, facing the front. This is a 200-year-old lady's handkerchief, so they would use this in the act. They said that it was von Lavash's childhood sweethearts. Probably wasn't true, but there are two initials on it. Can you read those initials? DS. D and an S. Um, I'm going to hang on to you for a second. I think you are very good at this. I think you've got a natural affinity for this. And, um, which is essentially, it's empathy. It's having people with high levels of empathy are very good at this, which is a nice thing. Also ties in with bravery, being brave. Um, yeah, we'll do it tonight. We'll do it tonight with Matt. Um, get a couple of chairs, please, and the table, and the stuff as well. <laughs> Excellent. Sit yourself down, Matt. You'll enjoy this. I don't get to do this very often. Um, good. Yes. Okay. I will. We need to. Oh, I need this. I need to give you this. Thank you. Also rather handy with filming this tonight. So, could you put that on your right hand for me? Um, Thank you very much. Let's just get this up on the screen. Thank you. All right, so put your right hand on your lap, put the left hand flat on the table. I'm just going to remove your watch, if that's okay. Uh, you just need to check something quickly first. I need to check that you don't feel anything if I do this. Can't feel that, can you? No. Nope. No, nope. good. All right, no reason why you should, of course. This is a dead bit of wood. It feels nothing. It's, a, it's, a, it's an inanimate bit of wood. No sensations in there at all. It's dead. I want you to look at this hand here, and one last time now, just let him take full control of that hand. That's good, you'll feel those movements, but it can remain on the table as he just takes full control. And as you watch the back of that hand now, he's going to make the back of the hand completely numb as you watch all the sensations will just drain out and down and into the table and away. As you watch the back of the hand, he is going to bring your fingers in together, your fingers and thumb in together at the same rate and speed that the back of the hand becomes completely numb. Those final sensations draining out and down and into the table as he brings your fingers in together, that's good. Excellent. Lovely. Now bring up your other hand. Point the finger of this hand and just touch yourself on the arm, first of all. Now you can feel that, can't you? Yep. yep, quite normally. It's a very thin glove, so you can feel that. Now touch the back of that hand. What's that like? <laughs> I can't feel anything. You can't, can you? It's completely dead. Will you just show them? Just pinch a great big bit of skin and twist it round. Just twist it right, yank it right round. That's good. Just do that again. Just show, just show them. You can't, you can't feel it, can you? Twist it right round. You could bash it, you could pinch it, you could twist it, you could stick a needle through it. You really wouldn't feel a thing, would you? No. And would you be prepared to do this for us? You are very good at this. I want to show you something that you will remember for the rest of your life. If I promise you that you won't feel a thing and we'll do it completely safely, would you be happy to push a sterilized needle just through the skin and the back of the hand? Yeah? Okay. Excellent. Good. Thank you, Matt. All right. So a couple of health and safety points I have to adhere to as well. So let me just uh, put one of these on here. Is it weird? Yes. Yes. 
and then this here is a sterilized needle. Fantastic. All right. Yes. It's like I'm unsealing that. If you take hold of that, it is a bit of a bendy one. So as you do it, I will steady it for you, but I'll let you do the pushing. I'm going to do it. You're going to do it. Yes, of course you are. Um, <laughs> so look, but I'll steady it just because it's a bit bendy. Listen, I am just going to pinch the skin. Now, this is like you're watching me pinch the skin on someone else's hand. The whole thing is like this is happening to somebody else. So let me just do that. Weird. weird, isn't it? So look, just press the end of the needle first of all. Just come in the middle and just press it down. You're quite happy? Doesn't hurt, does yeah, it? No. All right, so look, I'll steady it. You just go right the way through. You can see it right, coming right out the other side. Yeah. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> so let go there for me. What goes through your head as you look at that? What's that like? What is this like? It, I just can't feel anything. <laughs> Is it like looking at someone else's hand? I can't take it off the table or anything. It's just there. <laughs> and in a sense, of course, it is someone else's hand at the moment. This is also interesting. Look, if I pinch it again, if you slowly pull that out, you'll see it doesn't bleed. Just slowly, because a wooden hand does not bleed. See? No blood on the needle. No blood on the skin. Let me just take this back from you. I need to seal it back up for tomorrow's show. So <laughs> All right, give me a hand there. I'm going to take this off there. Now, listen. He now begins to relinquish all control. He lets go of you now completely. You will now start to feel ordinary, comfortable sensations right from up here, starting to come down through the arm and along and into the hand. Now, just give that a moment. You'll start to get a bit of movement, ordinary, comfortable sensations. Excellent. Just come around the front for me. Now, there's your watch. Just hold that for a second. Now, look, you might find after a couple of minutes, sorry, that you do get like a little, um, like a little tingling sensation or a vague sense that something went on there. But I promise you, nothing uncomfortable. Are you quite happy with the fact you did that? Yep. And it didn't hurt at all? No, not one bit. Matt, thank you so much. You were fantastic. Thank you very much, Lee. Thank you. Matt, everybody, I'll let you head back. Thank you, Matt. <clears throat> So if you missed the start of the show, this is Gresham Street in the City of London. The Bank of England is just down there. We have a fake security van, a fake security guard, and £100,000 of real money. There are 15 cameras watching this area. We have no idea what's going to happen or if anything's going to happen, but we just hope to cover it as best as we can. You have followed every aspect of the persuasion process uh, so far. Nothing has been added or taken away. It is the linking of certain emotional states uh, to certain triggers, piece of music, uh, colour, certain words and so on. Our participants have no idea that they're going to be filmed or that anything has been set up and we don't know what they're going to do. This is nothing we've been able to rehearse and if it doesn't work we will just show it to you not working four times in a row. There's really no way of knowing. This whole area has been cordoned off from the public and is being supervised by the police. Our four subjects have been told to expect a phone call and that they'll have to travel into the City of London for a final motivational session. Hey, how are you doing? It's Darren. Hello. Uh, just about to pick you up. There's a car just around the corner that's going to come and get you, so if you can uh, grab your stuff and I will see you in a bit. I think the car's going to drop you just down the road, so you've got to walk up the last bit by yourself. As with every day, you know, as I say time and time again, this is about every day finding some opportunity to experience something that makes you feel great and exhilarated, yeah? So you know, make that decision to steal yourself and grab the opportunity to make all this work really, really pay off. It's just about standing in the face of security in life, isn't it, and making it do what you want it to do. Because ultimately, I suppose all of this is about you knowing that you're the one with the weapon of absolute pointed, aggressive, unquestioning power. They're also told to bring with them their toy guns that they were given at the seminar. All of our cameras and crew are well hidden. None can be seen by our four subjects. Targets in zone one. All cameras locked in position. Stand by car. Now remember that two weeks ago, Victoria was an ordinary businesswoman, a press officer at a motivational seminar. Go trigger music in the car.
No, hell yeah. I think you should get on the floor. Don't you? Don't you? On the floor. Okay, Phil, let's down. Okay. Right? <sighs> what happened? Why did you do that? I saw the guy coming out of the thing. I don't know. It was like just before. I don't know. It was just something coming out. It was just like a split sending light. When I'm playing rugby, I feel like I've got an important match or something. Yeah. Um, it's like a hundred times better. Come with me. Come with me. It's getting out the car now. It's getting out the car now. Target is in sight. Target is in zone one. And cue car. Down, down, get down on the floor. Down on the floor. Down on the you floor. Ain't do it. On your, on your front. Right, yeah. On your front. On your front. Right over. Right over. Stop looking at me. Right over. Stop looking. Face front. Look forward. Look forward. Look forward. Tell you what, mate. You try anything, you're dead. All right. Morning. Look forward, mate. Oh, I'll fucking put it in this. Look forward. Look forward. Mate, if you move, I swear to God, you're dead, mate. If you've got family. Danny. Just a second. All right. 
Okay, take a moment. Okay, come with me. I'm going to make sure you're okay. All right? Yeah, okay. come with me. Stealing sweets is one thing, but stealing boxes of money from the Bank of England is a completely different kettle of fish. I'm a good person. <laughs> I'm a good person. You good? <laughs> nervous, darling. Are you? Alright, would you put yourself up on that bed there for me, please? Okay. Close your eyes for me. As you start to undo the aggression, or as you start to undo those aspects of it that would have led you to hold up a security man, all that goes now. You now have something very powerful to draw from. Something that you can think back to with the necessary distance to just take from it everything that's good. weeks have been the most fun I've had in ages. It's been brilliant. I've taken away a sense of power, a sense of achievement, a sense that anything is possible, really. It's just a really amazing experience, something that I can kind of look back on and think about how I was able to really push myself and perhaps I'll be able to do that from now on, I think. I realise now that I'm a lot stronger willed than I thought I was. And the fact that I didn't go through with the steel itself. I'm very pleased with myself. I think the last couple of weeks have been an absolute roller coaster. It's been such a positive experience and I'm on an absolute high at the moment. Everything just back to normal, just like you were before, except for all the good stuff that you want to take with you, which you've now created and created for yourself. And that's a way of thanking you for everything that you've done. Those chairs, any colour, doesn't matter. One of the chairs, bring it here and take a seat in it by the table. The green chair, good choice, just there, that'd be great. If you can take a seat in that, that'd be great. Uh, and also, I need you to pick a pen. Uh, there are a whole bunch of pens. If you grab one of the, I don't want to see which one you take, so just take it and sort of put it behind your back or cover it up or put it in your pocket or something. Good. Okay, so Joey, you have on the table here three white blocks. What you're going to do is number them one, two, and three, but you can do that in any order you like. And in fact, I'd rather people didn't know what order you did it in, all right? Okay. So you can take them under the table and do it yep. and mix them up and bring them out in any order. When you number them, nice and large and clear, only on the one side that faces you, but nice and large and clear so when we do want to show them around, people can see which number's which. Okay, do that for me now. Yep. Go. Take them under the table, do them one at a time, mix them up if you like, under the table just so nobody could guess which block is which when you bring it out. Tell me when you're done. 
Okay, thank you. Now I want you to stack them in any order you like. So keep those numbers towards you, but stack them one on top of the other, any order that you like. Done that? No. <laughs> Done. Done? Okay. Happy with the order they're in? Yeah. I want you kind of making gut decisions here. Good. All right, put the pen away, please. Put it in your pocket. Get it out of the way. Done? No. No? <laughs> Yeah. Quick joke. Great. Good. Uh, now, there is a bag just behind you on that little table. I'm not going to look at what you've done. I will keep looking here. Can you grab that paper bag, put it over the block so nobody can see? I'm not going to look, Joe. I will keep looking at this lady here, spe specifically just down her top. <laughs> Does nothing for me, don't worry. Okay. Uh, you ready? Yeah. Have you done it? Are they covered? Yeah. Joe, are you happy? First of all, that bag genuinely covers them and you can't see, well, can't see yeah. what's what. Yeah. Well, just turn it, maybe just... Joe, are you happy that it was a free choice that the way in which you ordered the, uh, the bricks was a completely free choice? Are you happy yeah. with that? Yep. Yeah. And you're happy that the, uh, that the numbers can't be seen? All right. Joe, I need to do one more thing for me. There is a stand just there with a sort of a mic stand with a clip in it. I've got a couple here as well. Can you grab that? Perfect. Yep, that's it. There's a red cross. If you can just put it there, that'll be great. All right. So, Joe, come here for me. You happy this was a free choice, a seemingly free choice? Yeah. Yeah? If you take that for me. Oh, well, there are a number of seemingly free choices that you've made since you came up here. And about an hour before any of you came in, I sat on this stage wondering about what seemingly free choices I could make you or whoever came up pick. I took photographs of me with those predictions and put them in that envelope. Now, if you open the envelope up, you'll see inside are three large photographs. I don't want you to see what they are yet. I want you to take them out face down and place them on the table. All right? Please don't look at what they are yet and don't show anybody else either. Great. But can you just check there's nothing else in the envelope? Happy with that? Yep. Excellent. Good. Go on. So, the first decision that you made when you came up, Joe, was the choice of... Uh, the chair. The chair. Very good. And yep. you went for the green chair? Yeah. As opposed to the red or the blue. Happy that was a free choice? Yeah. A seemingly free choice. Yeah. Yet, the first picture that we took is of me with the, say it, Joe. Green chair. The green chair. Round of applause for Joe. <laughs> so let me fix the green chair. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Let me this out. The green chair. Excellent. And the next choice you made, what was that? Uh, it was the pen. The pen? Yeah. Now there are uh, about 60 different pens in there, all different colours. Don't take it out yet. The pen I hope you went for was the blue pen. Joe, do you want to show them what you've got? What colour is it? It is indeed blue. the blue pen. Can you see that? The blue pen, a perfect match. A perfect match. Good. Well done. Good. And there's one more. One more decision that you made up here. Call it psychic. Call it coincidence. You be the judges, ladies and gentlemen. But that is, I believe, a perfect match. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah, I realise... I realise that's pathetic. Um, but if you think about it, free choice of pen, let's say that's one in, whatever, 60 or so. Free choice of uh, how to then stack the bricks in that colour. The chances of stacking the bricks in the predicted order, in the particular colour, it worked out about, it's about one in a billion. Trust me. If you take the, uh, take the bag off the bricks, chuck the bag on the floor, turn the bricks around slowly from the bottom. In blue pen, three, one, two... Excellent, Joe, you've been sensational. Joe, everybody, good. I arranged to meet some racing experts to test out some of my ideas and hopefully convince them that I could, indeed, have a reliable system. Phil Bell is the manager of Fontwell Park Racecourse. Katie Stevens is the manager of Hereford Racecourse. James Pyman is a journalist and tipster for the Racing Post. Jim Boyle is a racehorse trainer and a council member of the National Trainers Federation. Can I get you to mix up those four envelopes for me? Just give them a mix. And if you can stick these on yourselves, they peel off and you can put the backings uh, in your pocket if you like. Thank you very much. Just put one of those on you each. And if you grab one of those as well, thank you. Have, a, have an envelope too. You've all been interviewed about uh, this idea of there being a system and uh, whether it's possible to predict the horses accurately uh, and predictably you've all sort of said no, it's not. It, it's not possible. I would say that it's massively unlikely but by no means impossible to have a system that would work. A, a mathematician worked out the probability of, of having a system that would accurately predict a winning horse every time is uh, it's 1.48 billion to one, hugely unlikely, as good as impossible, but not impossible, that's the point, actually just massively improbable. So what I'm going to do um, 
is to ask you to sort of step into this world of, of people here. There are 500 Polaroid pictures, and these are just members of the public. And I'm going to ask you to each go and select one of these pictures. It's just really important as you do this um, that it is a random selection. So please don't let what the people look like, you know, how attractive or unattractive they are. I don't let any of that influence you. Some of the, you know, if any of the names happen to remind you of people that you know, again, none of that is to influence you at all. These have to be random selections. That's very important at this point. What I would say is, by doing this, I am showing you how my system works. It'll make more sense to you when you watch the program back, then that'll, you'll understand what I mean. Please have a good look around at them all. You see they're all different. Take as long as you like. When you've got one, just stand by it and let me know that you've uh, chosen one. But take as long as you like. Feel free to have a good wander around first. The pictures themselves have long numbers on the back, but don't worry about those for now. Those will be uh, important later on. Take your time. Just put your hand up when you've chosen one, and okay, great, lovely. All got one? Yeah. Excellent, thank you very much indeed. Unclip the pictures, uh, just take them off the, off the string, there's a couple of little pegs on each one. Lovely. So bringing your picture with you, what I want you to do, not quite yet, when I tell you to, is to come and stand on one of these four black spots that there are here on the, uh, on the ground. So if you come and do that for me now, any one of these four. Excellent. Thank you very much indeed. So there are 500 pictures there. You've each got one. You've come back and stood on one of these spots each, thus putting yourself in a, um, in a different order um, and uh, chosen large... I mean, it is by chance. It is random, apart from the fact that whoever would have... Probably whoever was closest, whoever took a picture from closest, would have had the choice of any one of the four to stand on. Probably the, who was last to come in? I was last. Yeah, so you, you didn't have any choice at all. The order you put yourself, if you look at your stickers, is one, three, four, two. Yes? And you're happy that that is... If you can just hold on to that for a second for me. You're happy that that is a randomly, seemingly unpredictable order that you would, that you would come and stand in. Yes? Okay. That. Just open up the, the red envelope that you saw it was hanging there all along and just read out what it says in there. The order you will stand in will be one, three, four, two. One, three, four, two. Turn it around, show the camera. One, three, four, two, the order that you've, that you've ended up standing in. Excellent. Thank you very much. Congratulations. A seemingly impossible thing to predict, but the point is, it's not impossible. It's, not, it's, it's highly improbable, but not impossible. All right? Now, you're all odds experts, so what are the odds of me predicting, knowing in advance which order you were going to stand in? One of you has a choice of four. The next person has a choice of three, the next one two, the next one one. The answer is four times three times two times one, which is uh, 24. One in 24. That's the improbable odds of me knowing in advance which order you were going to come and stand in, all right? Not impossible, just highly improbable. Okay. Next, uh, if you just take the pictures and just, if you turn them around and show the cameras just so we can see uh, who all these people are. Let's get the names as well. Jenny Pringle. Jenny Pringle, thank you. You can just show the camera. Peter Burgess. Peter Burgess. Carl Smith. Carl Smith. Jane Baker. Jane Baker. Excellent. Okay. So sorry. So Jenny Pringle. Your your full name is James Pyman. Pyman. So your initials are JP. JP. Yeah. And the initials of this woman are also JP. Are also JP. Your name is Phil Bell. Phil Bell. And show us. Peter Burgess. Same initials. PB. Yes. Your initials. Do they match? Katie Stevens. Katie Stevens. And what's that, Carl Smith? And your full name is Jim? Boyle. Jim Boyle, JB, all right? So your initials match the initials of the photographs that you picked. And please have a look around. None of the other initials match any of your names, all right? Seemingly impossible for this to happen. But it's not impossible, it's just highly improbable, yeah? What are the chances of that happening? There are 500 pictures, so the first person to take one has a choice of 500. The next person doesn't quite. The next person only has a choice of 499 because one of them's just been taken. And the next person has a choice of 498. And the next one, 497. So that number, 500 times 499 times 498 times 497, gives you the probability of you picking the Polaroids, the only Polaroids that have the same initials that match yours. And the, who mixed the envelopes at the beginning? That was you. So you mixed the envelopes, uh, you handed them out, you each took one. If you open them up, take out what's inside. In fact, wait, you do yours first for me, just so we can get this on camera. Can you open yours up? 
Recognise the picture? Yeah. It's a picture that matches the Polaroid that you took. That is Jenny, was it Jenny Pringle? Jenny Pringle. Jenny yeah. Pringle. Do you want to take yours out as well, Phil? Hopefully that matches the one that you've just picked. And Katie? Excellent. And you? And you'll do the same for me, Jim? Is it the same? Can you just hold them up with the pictures as well? Just fantastic. You pick the ones that match the envelopes that you mixed and took at the beginning. Again, the chances of that, impossible. Seemingly <laughs> impossible. But the same odds. It's 500 times 409 times 408 times 497, which means if you just keep hold of your Polaroids, but just drop everything else on the floor just by the, the spots around it, just keep hold of the little Polaroids. The chances, what are the chances of all of that happening? The chances of me knowing where you were going to stand, which pictures you were going to take, the uh, initials matching up and matching what you picked at the random envelopes at the beginning. If you come forward for me, if you come back where you were, if you put yourselves back into one, two, three, four order, so one, two, three, four, and I'm going to give you a, uh, let me just give you a, a uh, calculator there. The chances of all that happening is, it's 24 times this here. So if you do, I'll do 500 times 499 times 498 times 497. Anybody watching this at home with a computer or a big calculator might want to do this. Work out what that is for me and then multiply that by 24. The answer I can tell you is 1482065. Doing this? 928000. Is that the correct number? That's the correct number. That's the odds of all of those things happening. Not impossible, just massively improbable. One last thing. If you just hold the faces together so the camera can see. Just hold the Polaroids up. And just bring them together a little bit. Excellent. I did say there were numbers on the back, not to pay any attention to them yet. All right, now I'm going to turn these around. Have a look at them on the back before I turn them around. 1482 065 928 Zero, zero, zero. You pick the Polaroids that had the numbers on the back that make up the odds of all of that having happened. And that odd is 1.48 billion, is the same odds as this system existing in the first place that allows me to break the horses every time. Not impossible, just massively improbable. Thank you very much. Something for you to think about. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks for taking part. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. <laughs> Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very Katie, much. Thank you very much indeed. Excellent. I shall leave you with those numbers. Cheers. Stop the music there. Why don't you come up here? And let me ask you, you weren't asked to put your hand up, there's no prior arrangement. What's your name? Joe. Joe, come with me, Joe. Uh, I want you to grab one of those chairs, any colour, doesn't matter, one of the chairs, bring it here and take a seat in it by the table. The green chair, good choice, just there, would be great. If you can take a seat in that, that'd be great. Uh, and also, I need you to pick a pen. Uh, there are a whole bunch of pens. If you grab one of the... I don't want to see which one you take, so just take it and sort of put it behind your back or cover it up or put it in your pocket or something. Good. OK, so, Joe, you have on the table here three white blocks. What you're going to do is number them, one, two, and three. But you can do that in any order you like. And in fact, I'd rather people didn't know what order you did it in, all right? Okay. So you can take them under the table and do it yep. and mix them up and bring them out in any order. When you number them, nice and large and clear, only on the one side that faces you, but nice and large and clear so when we do want to show them around, people can see which number's which. OK, do that for me now. Yep. Go. Take them under the table, do them one at a time. Mix them up if you like under the table just so nobody could guess which block is which when you bring it out. Tell me when you're done. OK, thank you. Now I want you to stack them in any order you like. So keep those numbers towards you, but stack them one on top of the other, any order that you like. Done that? No. <laughs> Done. Done? OK. Happy with the order they're in? Yeah. I want you kind of making gut decisions here. Good. All right, put the pen away, please. Put it in your pocket. Get it out of the way. Done? No. No? <laughs> Yeah. Quick joke. Great. Good. Uh, now, there is a bag just behind you on that little table. I'm not going to look at what you've done. I will keep looking here. Can you grab that paper bag, put it over the block so nobody can see? I'm not going to look, Joe. I will keep looking at this lady here, spe specifically just down her top. <laughs> Does nothing for me, don't worry. Okay. Uh, you ready? Yeah. Have you done it? Are they covered? Yeah. Joe, are you happy? First of all, that bag genuinely covers them and you can't see, well, can't see yeah. what's what. Yeah. Can we just turn it, maybe just... Joe, are you happy that it was a free choice that the way in which you ordered the, uh, the bricks was a completely free choice? Are you happy yep. with that? Yep. And you're happy that the, uh, that the numbers can't be seen? All right. Joe, I need to do one more thing for me. There is a stand just there with a sort of a mic stand with a clip in it. I've got a couple here as well. Can you grab that? Perfect. Yep, that's it. There's a red cross. If you can just put it there, that'll be great. All right. 
So, Joe, come here for me. You happy this was a free choice, a seemingly free choice? Yeah. Yeah? If you take that for me. Oh, well, there are a number of seemingly free choices that you've made since you came up here. And about an hour before any of you came in, I sat on this stage wondering about what seemingly free choices I could make you or whoever came up pick. I took photographs of me with those predictions and put them in that envelope. Now, if you open the envelope up, you'll see inside are three large photographs. I don't want you seeing what they are yet. I want you to take them out face down and place them on the table. All right, please don't look at what they are yet and don't show anybody else either. Great. But can you just check there's nothing else in the envelope? Happy with that? Yep. Excellent. Good. Gone. So, the first decision that you made when you came up, Joe, was the choice of... Uh, the chair. The chair, very good. And yep. you went for the green chair? Yep. As opposed to the red or the blue. Happy that was a free choice? Yeah. A seemingly free choice. Yeah. Yet, the first picture that we took is of me with the, say it, Joe. Green chair. The green chair. Round of applause for Joe. <laughs> Correctly picks the green chair. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Let me this out. The green chair. Excellent. And the next choice you made, what was that? Uh, it was the pen. The pen? Yeah. Now, there are uh, about 60 different pens in there, all different colours. Don't take it out yet. The pen I hope you went for was the blue pen. Joe, do you want to show them what you've got? What colour is it? It is indeed blue. the blue pen. Can you see that? The blue pen, a perfect match. A perfect match. Good. Well done. Good. And there's one more. One more decision that you made up here. Call it psychic. Call it coincidence. You be the judges, ladies and gentlemen. But that is, I believe, a perfect match. <laughs> yes. I realise that's pathetic, um, but if you think about it, free choice of pen, let's say that's one in whatever, 60 or so, free choice of uh, how to then stack the bricks in that colour, the chances of stacking the bricks in the predicted order, in the particular colour, it worked out about, it's about one in a billion, trust me. If you take the, uh, take the bag off the bricks, chuck the bag on the floor, turn the bricks around slowly from the bottom, in blue pen, three, one, two, excellent, Joe, you've been sensational. Good. Actually, Joe, 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 come, come back for a second, come back for a second. I'm going to stand, stand back there for a minute. There was one more decision that you made. You remember what that was? No. No? Decision to raise my hand. Exactly. The decision to choose yourself yeah. for this. And I'm pleased that you chose yourself in the same way that I'm pleased that you chose the green chair. Because if you'd have picked um, the, uh, the red or the blue chair, for example, there would have been... Nothing. Nothing. Come around behind the green chair. Tip it up in the same way so they can see. There is something. Take it off. It's a black envelope. I'm pleased you picked the green chair. Come around the front for me. Before you open that envelope, I do need to ask you again, Joe. I know it's an obvious point, but please. Your choice to put your hand up was your decision that you made naturally as you yep, listened to that piece of music. Yep. yep. Nobody asked you to put no, your hand up or anything like that. All. all right, OK. Open the envelope. Inside one sheet of paper. What does it say? 295. 295. And Joe, be honest, what's your lucky number? It's not 295. <laughs> oh, you've got to lie, Joe, it's a bit of a disappointment. Um, no, 295 does relate to something. This number relates to a ticket stub number. One of you should have a ticket stub with 295 on it. Could you have a look? Can you take your ticket stubs out? Whoever's got 295, just hold your hand up for us. Give us a wave if you are 295, one of you should be. Have a look, it's in quite big numbers. Nobody? Someone in this room should have ticket stub number 295. Joe, do you have your ticket stub on you? In your passport. Thank God for that. 295, 295, a perfect match. Thank you very much. 295. Joe, you're a sensational. Joe, thank you, that's a cheap souvenir. Joe, everybody, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. On Wednesday, on Wednesday, I was handsome enough to predict Her Majesty's Lottery live on television. Uh, I didn't profit in any way from it, as Channel 4 didn't allow me to buy a ticket. Uh, but it's been fantastic reading all the conspiracies and speculations around at the moment. Lasers writing numbers onto the balls and moving them somehow, and split screens and balls with special LED readouts and impossible sleight of hand. But if you missed it, here's what it looked like. 
the BBC broadcast the lottery, the lottery draw, absolutely live, 100% live to the second. We are doing the same here. And when I turn the television on, uh, when I'm allowed to, uh, I'll get a, a nod in a second when I, when I can do that, um, you can flick back and forwards between the BBC and this one to see that we are absolutely live and in sync with the BBC. The most you'll get is like a tiny whisker of a delay, about a second, because we're taking a BBC feed, essentially, and then passing it through Channel 4 to get to you, and that takes about a second or so. But the BBC are live, 100% live. The lottery draw is live. We are 100% live here. Um, I'm being told there's a little bit of little bit, about 30 seconds before we can uh, turn the television on. Um, I should say this is the culmination of like a year's uh, obsession over this. I've had lottery numbers all up over the wall of my house. Um, I'm feeling uh, a little bit sick. Please wish me luck. And if it goes wrong, as I'm after five out of the six, if it goes wrong, or I only get a couple, or none at all, I'm really sorry. And I'll, I'll apologise about that in, in advance. I'm really sorry. But this, this hopefully... Hopefully will work. Again, I've done nothing illegal. Uh, I've done nothing illegal. There's, there's nothing that will affect your chances of doing this. And there'll be a show on Friday at 9 o'clock showing you how I did this as well. So you can watch that. You can find out how I did it. And if you like, uh, you might want to try the same thing too. Uh, I, we can turn the TV on. We can turn the TV on. So this will come on in a second. You can flick between the BBC and Channel 4 if you want. This will warm up in a second to uh, see that this is absolutely live. Um, and uh, here we go. God. So, this is from Lottery HQ. Um, uh, oh, this is still this, this is still the dream number, isn't it? Okay. So, this is uh, this is just. Oh no no! This is it! This is it! This is it! It's not the dream number. We're now into it. So yes, here we come from the rather shiny, lovely studio of the BBC that they call Lottery HQ. They have a glamorous assistant every week to help present. This week's glamorous assistant is O.J. Borg. There he is. And uh, the jab got there, oh, 2,000, 2 million rather, 400,000. That's, uh, that's, that's quite exciting. Uh, there it is. There's the draw master with the white gloves. Oh, the balls are down. The voice is the voice of Alan Dedekert. Uh, the voice of the balls. This is an initial production for the BBC and the National Lottery Commission. I'm required to say that. that that's a close-up there, so you can see there's no tampering going on. Uh, 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 and, uh, yes, Dallin Dedicate there, the voice of the balls. Uh, we'll be talking you through them. And, and he's about to press the big red shiny button that they pressed to make uh, a lot of people very rich. Uh, there's been 2,000. Oh, there he goes. He's gone. He's gone. Oh, God. Number 23. Let's not forget to date, national lottery players have raised over 23 billion pounds for the good causes. Next up is number 35, with his last Wednesday night as well, that 183rd time as a main ball, and the third to be drawn. Out she comes, that's number 11. Drawn the Wednesday before last two, you'll recall if it's one of your chosen few, 225th lotto outing. Here's the next one. And that is number 28. Don't forget how every pound spent on the National Lottery, around 28 pence, goes to the good causes. Next out is number 39. Seen over the last two Saturday nights as well. 205th lotto outing for that one. And the sixth one that could make you very rich is right there, number two. Fourth number joining this last weekend. That little beauty, 180th time it's been a main ball. The bonus tonight is... Number 15. So, Millionaire's Row midweek uh, looks like this in a second. Bonus ball order. doesn't matter, we're not, we're not involved in the bonus ball. So, in order, 11, we have oh, 2, 11, 23, 28, 28 35, 35, and, 35 39. and 39. Those are the lottery numbers for this week 2, 11, 23, 28, 35, and 39. And, uh, ladies and gentlemen, my prediction for the lottery numbers this week are 2, 11, 23, 28, 35, 39, in numerical order. Those are the numbers. <laughs> That's a year of my life right there. I hope you can see those. 2, 11, 23, 28, 35, and 39. So this, it's an envelope, I'm going to put it here, it's a, a prediction, if you like, a prediction of the future, of decisions that you're going to make which will lead to what's in that envelope, and you have to, you can't not make those decisions. You can't not make decisions that will lead to what's in there. It's inevitable. What's in there is inevitable. Ish. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm going to throw these out, these are heavier than you think, so if one comes at you, please catch it, alright? Don't sit there going, no, I won't, because it will just, you know, they are heavy. <laughs> these are today's papers. Today's papers, you grab one for me there. Thank you for the times. Um, let's go over there. Somebody catch for me. Um, sorry. Uh, Daily Mail, over there. Thank you very much. Uh, okay. Uh, Daily Mail. Oh, we've had the Daily Mail. I'm sorry. Uh, independent. Let's get one up there. Catch for me. 
Thank you. Uh, got another independent. There are a couple of duplicates. So somebody catch this up there. Ready? Mm. Oh. Oh, heavy, heavy. You all right? You okay? Count the buttons. Have a go. Just go and get a go. <laughs> Whose phone's that? Whose phone was that? Don't answer it. It's really bad news. Uh, the sun. Uh, great, thank you. Uh, let's get another one up there. This is the mirror, Daily Mirror. Somebody catch? Will you throw that one back again for me so somebody else gets it? Try and get that one round towards the middle there, all right? Uh, telegraph, over there, downstairs. Somebody catch for me, please. And uh, can we move that one that way a little bit? Just trying to spread them all out. And the garden, have the one over there if you like. And the evening standard. <sighs> All right, spread this one out. I'll move it. Can you? It won't go as far. Will you throw it over that way, please, so they all spread out? That is ten of today's papers. Now we need Danny. Danny with the case. Do you want your necklace back, Danny? Where are you? Where are you, Danny? Bring the case up. Head up here quick as you can. Keep it going for Danny. Come on, Danny, run. Let's keep it going for Danny. Danny, thank you so much. Please check your necklace is okay. What paper do you read, by the way? Uh, what, what do you read? What? Okay, let me just get rid of that. Sorry, let me chuck that down there. Um, any of you, sorry, is that all right? Do you want to pop in your pocket for now? Rather than put, yeah, great, come and stand over here for me. Um, okay, if any of you have got the papers that uh, match the papers you read at home or anything, just please take them home with you so you can check at the end, you know, that they are real papers, which they are, it'll give you a chance to check that. Okay, so you tried lots of different numbers on here? Yeah, any luck at all? No. No, did you try your birthday? No. No, sometimes people do, okay, but you tried lots of different numbers and, okay, all right, good. Good. Okay, so we need to get this open. So, could you, if you've got a paper in your hand, I'd like you just to hold it up in the air for me and just wave it in the air. Leave the band on it, but move it around, please. Keep it waving. Will you please choose someone who's got their hand up? Over there in the green. Lady in the green. Do you stand up for me for a second? Thank you so much. Ready? You can put your papers down. Okay, your name, please. Kirsty. Kirsty, thank you. And the paper you've got is? The Daily Mail. The Daily Mail. Thank you so much. Are you happy to do this with Kirsty? Yep. Yep. Happy to do it with the Daily Mail? Yeah. Yep. Okay, and if you are, because all these things we can change as you go along, all right? You need to know these are your decisions that you can change. Great. So, Kirsty, for now, I'll ask you to sit back down, uh, and the rest of you, take your papers, please, home with you. Kirsty will come back to you in a second. All right, so look, if I asked you, turn and face me, if I asked you what the combination was in that lock, you'd have to say you didn't know. Yeah. Because there's no way that you could know, all right? Um, but part of that is you thinking it's impossible. Because mm -hmm. it sounds impossible, but you know, there's only three numbers you've got to get. Mm -hmm. You know which number is between 0 and 39, because you'll have worked that out. Yeah. So if I told you that you did know what the numbers were, yeah. right, and instead of you going, oh, I don't know what they are, just to think, yes, I do know what they are. Like you're playing a game where you're pretending to be psychic and thinking, yes, I know what the numbers are. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. so, so you think it's easy. It's an easy thing to know. So if I told you you knew the first number in the combination, what is that? What's the first number, say it? One. You think it's one. Then turn it to one. Turn it to one. Excellent. Come back to me. All right. So you've had one as the first number in the combination. So now we've got the next number in the combination, all right? So again, just believing that you know it. Don't think, oh, you're thinking, yes, I do know it, all right? Mm -hmm. So what's the next number in the combination that will open the padlock? What is it? Between 0 and 39. It's 20. not going to be 1, 2, 3, all right? So what's the next number in the combination? Look at me. 24. 24. Very good. Turn it to 24. Excellent. Very good. These numbers just popping into your head, yes? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, so we've had one and we've had 24. Now, what's the last number going to be, look at me, in the combination which opens the padlock? What's the last number? 15. Say? 15. 15. No, but you're slightly questioning it. You're going to change one of those two digits. You're going to change the one or the five? The five. The five. Great. And what are you going to change it for? Three. Three. So the final number is? 13. 13. Turn it to 13 for me. And Paul? Done. Nicely done, Danny. Nicely done, well done. Take the chain off, honey, Danny. Take the chain off, just go on the floor, right, put the case down on the table. And I want you to just press in the little uh, white buttons there, and then you better lift the top half up. Do that for me. Great, yeah, you can just lift, just, that's great. What's inside? What is that? I hope it's not a mouse. No, no, what is it? It's Another case, take it out for me. There are 14 of these, bear with us. Uh, take it out for me, take it out. Um, okay, now look, the important thing is inside this, all right? Because I did this because I thought you might sneak a look in the side of that or crowbar it open. So the important thing is inside the case, inside the case. We will come back to that in a little bit. All right, uh, you chose a paper which was the Daily M mail. mail. Okay, and you didn't want to change your mind, so we're going, it was Kirsty, isn't it? So Kirsty, we need to choose a page from the mail. You are a little bit far away, so let's... Can I just grab a paper from the front there? Is that one of mine or one of the... Is that one of mine? This is uh, today's paper. Can you just verify into the mic there, please, that that is today's, uh, today's date, yes? Yeah. Well, if any of you get the times, you'll recognise it. Britain vows to imprison the tyrants of Africa. You'll recognise that if you get the times. Now, these headlines are written to influence us. Mm -hmm. The way we think about the article, the way we read the, uh, the, read the issue, even the way we vote sometimes, all right? 
And similarly, with advertising slogans, not like that. It affects the way we think about the product, the way we spend our money. I'm going to read you a bunch of headlines or advertising slogans. Your job, Danny, is to stop me any way you like while I'm reading one out. Whatever page we're on, that is the page we'll go with, but not in this, we'll go with it in the, uh, in the mail over there with Kirsty. All right, does that make sense? So when you do say stop, you need to say stop really clearly into the mic. Okay. And don't say it before I read something out. You can either say it while I'm reading one or just afterwards. Does that make sense? Okay. I'm trying to avoid anything uh, too... Miracle patient gets in the saddle. Gypsy moth rescued from South Sea Reef. <laughs> Sweetener is not a cancer risk. Stop. Are you sure? Yes. Sure? Want me to yes. carry on? And carry on if you like. You happy with that page? Yeah. Okay, all right. Uh, there we are. Sweetener is not a cancer risk. Into the, into the mic, please. The page is page... 14. Page 14. You happy with 14? Yeah. Only if you are. Then 14 we'll go with. So, Kirsty, if you stand up for me, you want to pull out page 14 from the Daily Mail. So if you drop everything else, so you're just holding on to the corner of page 14, just literally drop everything else on the floor. You'll probably find it comes out with another page attached to it. That's fine. Great, it does. Do me a favour, tear it down the middle for me, just so you've got two separate pages. Doesn't have to be perfect, but if you can sort of try and get that relatively clean. Excellent, then just hold out a page in each hand for me, Kirsty. Great, no, no, great, lovely, thank you. All right, so look, we only need one or the other, so you're going to either hand one down to the lady on that side or one down to the lady on that side. If you can do that for me. Yeah, whichever one you thank you so much. If that lady could stand, you can sit down for me now, Kirsty. Uh, so what page have you got there? The one with 14 on it or whatever was attached to it? It should probably be 70-something. 13. You've got 13 and 14. You've got that side. Okay, great. Will you have a look? What's your name, by the way? Melissa. Melissa, will you have a look at both sides for me, Melissa? And you don't need to memorise anything, but just have a look at both sides and get it around the way you'd like to have it and let me know when you've done that. Yep. And what page is that? What can I see? Hold it up for me like this. I can't. What page am I looking at there? 14. 14. Actually, it was the number you said. We've sort of come back to it. But we could have gone either way with either page, and that's fine. Okay, 14 it is then. Uh, Melissa, you need to start tearing that up. So if you can turn it landscape for me, tear it down the middle, put the two halves together, tear them again, put them together, tear them again. So, uh, so we get a nice pile of papers. Very important, don't drop any. And also, please try not to screw them up, all right? So a nice neat pile. As you, as you do this, oh. oh. Uh, it's the nail. It starts to hurt about now. <laughs> As you do this, can you come into the aisle as you do it, please? So keep tearing for me a nice, neat pile of, of papers, please. Uh, try not to drop in as you do it. <coughs> Actually, can you come right to the front? Keep tearing for me. Keep tearing until you feel you can't tear them anymore, all right? If you can come just down here for me, Melissa, that'll be great. Imagine one more. When you've done it, just hold out half on each hand. That's probably going to be as much... Okay, turn to face me, that'll be great. Turn to face me. So look, now what you're going to do, this is the only point I'm not going to let you change a decision that's made, all right? I'm going to go with Melissa's decision and I will go with your first decision, all right? When I click my fingers, just as we did back there, you're going to hand to me the half you'd like me to carry on with and the half you'd like me to use. The other half you can drop on the floor or whatever you like, okay? So when I click my fingers, the half that feels right to you, I'd like you to extend to me and those will be the ones I use. Ready? Here we go. Sure. Okay, so I'm going to take these without dropping any myself. Uh, so let me take them like that. Perfect, wonderfully done. A round of applause for Melissa, I think. Thank you very much indeed, Melissa. All right, do you want to take the microphone for me and head over to the table with me, please? Head over to the table for me. Is a, let me, I'm going to put those there. Can you take a seat for me? Sorry, sorry, head over to the table and just take a seat there for me. All right. Okay. Now look, we probably, I don't know how many we've got there exactly. If you give me a number uh, between 1 and 10, I'll, I'll count off that number of pieces, all right? And again, you can change your mind. As with everything that you choose, you can change, all right? So don't feel uh, committed to it. But into the mic, please, a number between 1 and 10. I'm going to count off that number of pieces that you tell me. 7. 7. Are you happy with the idea of me counting off 7 pieces, or do you want to change the number? No, I'll stay. Are seven. you sure? Yep. Okay, then I will count off seven pieces. Now, if I do anything other than count off seven pieces, if I start taking extra pieces or swapping anything like that, you must say so into the mic, because you guys can see fairly clearly, <clears throat> but you have the clearest view here, right? You are the eyes of the audience and everybody watching this, all right? And everybody watching this on TV as well. Okay, here we go. I will count off seven pieces. One. Two. Three. Four, five, I wish you can see these are all different as I do it, six, seven, that is the seventh piece I'm removing. All right, will you do me a favor, will you please take the uh, next piece for yourself? Okay, I won't even touch it, all right, so I won't, no, take it, take it for yourself, I'm not going to touch it, all right, okay. Now, 
You need to have a look at that. You need to choose a word on there. All right. So I'll take the mic from you. Have a look through it. Choose a word. I want. What I want is a nice, long, interesting word on there. All right. Um, otherwise, all this will have been a bit pointless. Have a good read through it, <clears throat> and then give me a uh, a nice, long, or interesting word on there that you'd like to go with. One that you can read on there. What are you going to go with? As you come to listen to the mic, basically, if we end up with a word like the or, un or under or whatever, at this point, it will seem a little bit of an anticlimax. So, what was, what was that again? Influential. Influential. Let's have a look. Okay, that's a very good word. Thank you. Um, okay, all right. Now, look, for the record, not the only long word on there. We've got overwhelmingly, establishment. There's quite a few lot. Educational. But you're happy with influential, yes? Mm -hmm. Okay, if you are, then I am. We'll go with that. That's one word chosen from about 40 on there. But we can certainly see it as one word chosen from about what? Uh, 2,000 words, it'll be on page 14 of the Daily Mail. We'll have about 2,000 words on it. There'll be about 80 pages in the Daily Mail. So that's 160,000 words just in the Daily Mail, yes? But there were 10 papers that you could have chosen from that were around the room. So that's 1.6 million different words that you had to choose from in this room, and you just, without me exaggerating, and you choose the word influential. Is that fair? Yeah. No. No. No, it's not. <clears throat> it is not fair. It's not. It's inevitable. It is not fair. It's inevitable that you chose the Daily Mail right there with Kirsty and didn't want to change your mind. Inevitable you said page 14 and didn't want to change your mind. I was so fair about that. Inevitable, Melissa, that you handed me that half with that word in it. And inevitable that you said to count off seven pieces and not three or just one or, all ten or whatever. And that you end up out of all the long words on then. It was not the only long word on there, correct? Yeah, that's true. Correct? That you chose the word influential. Let me show you why it's inevitable. <laughs> Open it up. Open it. <laughs> Okay, you need to hold there for me. Sorry, hold there for me. And uh, one more time into the mic, really loud. The word was? Influential. Influential, there it is, influential. <laughs> Danny, ladies and gentlemen, well done, Danny. <laughs> Danny, thank you so very much indeed. Danny, everybody.